Hi, video three of the 2402 lecture on pregnancy and development. Hey, I actually said that one correctly the first time. Uh, so we're now we're dealing with the embryo as it continues to develop. So just to get back to get get ourselves on where we're at, get our get our I don't know the term I'm looking for there. Uh, whatever. So here's a here's the things I'm going to be pointing out. I'm going to be pointing out these extra embryonic membranes. And they will be this one, the chorion, yolk sac, amnion, and oh, they don't show the allantois. Um, the allantois is actually going to be uh, right here, but I'll I'll show it. I'll maybe it's in a later bit image, but you don't have to identify where it is anyway. Uh, well, you have to know what it is. Started off great. All right, so extra embryonic membranes. There are four, and these <clears throat> extraembryonic membranes are produced by the embryo, and they are a special evolutionary adaptation. You might think, well, why am I talking about this? Because reptiles were the first organisms to have them. They were also the first organisms to lay their eggs on land, uh, on dry land, where they don't have to go back to the water to lay their eggs. Now, think about what a benefit that is. If you're a frog, you live basically on half on water half on land but you have to lay your eggs in water where there's a very particular set of aquatic predators that have evolved to deal with your eggs being in the water and they can eat them when reptiles evolved to move up further and further on land they started they they evolved these membranes to keep their egg supplied on land and if you look at a bird egg or a alligator egg or whatever you're going to see that uh, they have all four of these membranes. Now they have different functions, as I'll point out, but uh, that's because we've evolved internal uh, gestation. We keep the baby inside. We don't lay an egg, but we keep that evolutionary holdover of those membranes, and we've repurposed those membranes for their jobs that we have uh, for them today. So let's talk about them. The amnion, <clears throat> that is this uh, water sac right here. It's this container, right? And that's basically what it is. It's a it's a water filled or fluid filled cavity uh, with a membrane around it that provides buoyancy, so the baby can develop in sort of a zero g atmosphere, if you will. And it also prevents the the embryo from sticking to the walls of stuff. So it's like, like shock absorption, buoyancy, and keeps you from sticking to the walls. Now that's the same exact function it has in a chicken egg. If a chicken egg is developing, there's going to be a little water sac around the baby chick that does the same stuff. <clears throat> now we diverge after that. The yolk sac, which you can picture yolk in a chicken egg. Well, it starts off kind of looking like yolk. Right here, there's the yolk sac, right? Uh, now the yolk sac doesn't provide much, if any, nutrients to us because we quickly develop a placenta to get nutrients directly from the mother. But what it does do is that it will uh, form part of the gut, the, the early part of your digestive tract, and it performs uh, hematopoiesis, which is <clears throat> blood cells, specifically red blood cell production in this case. So you make your early blood cells that way. In a chicken, obviously, nutrition, right? And for us, I prefer it sunny side up. Now the allantois, right? That's the actual pronunciation. I say allantois or allantois, but it's allantois. This forms most of the umbilical cord, so if you wanted to identify where it was, it's right here, right? Most of that structure and the blood vessels that occupy it are formed from that first membrane. Now, in a chicken or whatever, a shelled egg producing amniote, amniote just refers to anybody that has amnion, which includes us. Uh, in a chicken, it acts as a waste sac, so it wouldn't be... The umbilical cord would be another kind of bag that would form over here. Now that's interesting because <clears throat> when I was in the Philippines, I had a dish called balut, and balut was is what I didn't know what it was when I agreed to eat it, and when it was when it showed up at the table, it was a chicken egg, and I'm like, oh, a chicken egg, hard boiled egg, no worries. And so I start to crack it open, and I'm told no. And there's like five other people. And they say, you know, you have to crack open this bottom bit first. And so I cracked open this sort of blunt end of the egg and peeled back the shell and peeled back the membrane. And there was this black fluid. And I'm still confused, right? It was kind of late at night. Um, and so I'm like, what do I do next? And they say, you, dr you, sit, you drink it. And so I sipped it. And I was like, man, that's delicious. Tasted great. 
turns out I was drinking the Alan Toas container, right? I'm drinking the waste, the metabolic waste of the chicken embryo, which I soon found out was still developing inside of the balut. And when I took for the next bite, I bit right through a chicken embryo. And I have to tell you, it was delicious. Shocking, but delicious. And so I was like, well, in for a dime, in for a dollar. So I, I ate the whole thing, and it was good. I'm, It was really good uh, once you get over the shock. And so then I look up at the uh, bartender, and he was like, uh, I said table, it was really boring. Looked up at the bartender, and he looked at me like kind of kind of shocked. And I go, what did I do it wrong? He goes, no, no. He goes, usually it's just only the old Filipino men that will eat the entire thing. Most people just eat the white. And I looked over at my companions, and they were all just eating the white. <laughs> and he goes like, good job. And he, go, he goes, you want another? And I was like, no, I'm good. Anyway, interesting story. Give it a shot. Uh, next comes the chorion, and, and last comes the chorion, which is, uh, for us, it forms the embryonic portion of the placenta, as we've already discussed. So all of this stuff, all of these extensions in here are the chorion of the embryo. Now, in a chicken, it, perform, it forms as a, a gas exchange membrane. If you've ever done that little Halloween trick where you put an egg in vinegar and soak it overnight, it will dissolve the calcium-based shell of the egg, and it will leave an egg-shaped membrane. Well, that membrane that forms that inner, you know, when you're, if you've ever hard-boiled an egg and have a hard time peeling off that little thin membrane, that thin membrane is the chorion. And it, it helps that egg, chicken eggs need, need oxygen and needs to get rid of CO2, and it passes through that membrane in a chicken. For us, it really kind of serves the same function except for directly with the mother. In any case, hopefully my stories weren't too convoluted. All right, enough of those membranes. These are the four extra embryonic membranes. Moving on to a embryonic process called gastrulation, which you've heard of in lab. This is where the embryo kind of folds and becomes modified and becomes more complicated with the cells differentiating into different types of tissues. Those different types of basic tissues are called primary germ layers. Uh, germinal, germ is short for germinal. So these are your initial la layers that germinate into true tissues. So before I l go, well, I may as well list these. So endoderm, here's the list, okay? And there's a good graphic on the next slide. Uh, forms the inner linings of your digestive tract and your respiratory system. So the inner linings of a lot of organs are formed by the endoderm. The epithelial lining of you, so that simple columnar epithelium that's in your stomach. That forms from endoderm. The respiratory mucosa, that forms from endoderm. <clears throat> ectoderm, outside, right? Endo means inside, ecto means outside. Yeah, forms something on the outside, your epidermis, but strangely, your nervous system too. Now, the nervous system forms through this kind of folding process, which I'm not going to go into, but it's kind of like if you fold, you, you fold a piece of paper. Ah, I'm not going to describe it. Anyway, the process of forming that tube is called neuralation. So the nervous system, your brain, your spinal cord, all your nerves derive from this stuff, ectoderm. Mesoderm forms everything else. So most of you is mesoderm. And here is that image I was promising. Uh, this is an embryo. It's kind of viewed from a slice, like a cross section of it. Uh, this infolding process forms this third layer called mesoderm with the endoderm, I'm sorry, ectoderm being up here in blue endoderm being down here in yellow. So ectoderm, like I promised over here, this stuff. Uh, endoderm, linings. Uh, mesoderm, lots of stuff. This forms your uh, your intervertebral discs, ultimately. ultimately. Muscles. Uh, some organs. Uh, some linings. Bones. Uh, ligaments, tendons, etc you know, lots of stuff. But just try to remember these guys. If it's not epidermis and nervous tissue, which you know is ectoderm, and if it's not the linings of, inner linings of some of your organs, which is endoderm, everything else. So if I say skull, mesoderm. If I say muscle, mesoderm. If I say kidneys, mesoderm. All right. That is video three. Thank you. See you in a second.